Laker Beans and welcome back to part two of the tarot card reading, a pick a group reading. I thought I could fit it all in one recording but that did not happen and then last night my phone died and decided not to charge and I had it plugged in charging all night and it only went up to 45% so my phone is currently at 20% recording this part two uh, reading for you so hopefully it works I'm probably going to have to get a, a phone. And I just ate lunch. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, welcome back. If you chose gro group number two, um, obviously I'm recording this a second the day after, so that's why it looks a little different in here. But I want to get this done for you guys because I have messages I want to share. So let's start off group number two. The first card is the Ace of Swords. Swords. Let's see what your message is here. Truth and mental clarity for group number two. When lightning strikes, the whole world seems to light up for just one second. It's as though you can see everything and this vision lingers on even through the storm. Such is the power of the Ace of Swords. Your mind will become clear, your thoughts precise. A great time to make those decisions that you've been putting off, group number two. Let's keep it going. Now you pull the Justice card, which is funny. My mom got that Justice card yesterday. So let's see what this is saying to you. Group number two, the Getting What You're Owed card. Justice is about fairness in life and often appears when you are entangled in a legal matter. Oh, wait, you didn't get justice, did you? I don't. Oh, you did. Okay. A compensate. Okay, so let me start over. Justice is about fairness in life and often appears when you are entangled in a legal matter, a compensation issue, or maybe a divorce or a dispute with an official body such as the tax authorities or an educational official. Justice says persist. Do not be intimidated by the big boys and girls and you will win. Justice can also turn up when you are being exploited by family, intimidated by neighbors or an employer, or do doing more than your fair share at work, owing to lazy, dishonest, or incompetent colleagues. Keep notes and dates, and if in a workplace dispute, go through official channels of protest. It could be that some deal offer or person who is helping with your work or financial affairs may be corrupt, and you probably sense this anyways. In the everyday world, you may need to weigh both sides of an argument before making a decision. Also remain impartial and don't play favorites with the family or take the side of one friend against another. The negative aspects of justice is holding on to the past injustices that cannot be resolved. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, let's keep going. Your spirit animal card is a whale. Whale desire to delve deeper, profound peace and ancient wisdom for group number two. The whale represents profound emotional health and stability. Whale personalities are not afraid of emotional expression or traversing difficult terrain as they have become they have overcome many challenges in their life. These experiences have enriched them, given them stability, strength, and a depth that is rare. Whale energy is usually linked to the feminine forces of compassion and communication. We can de depend on whale personalities when all else seems lost, and trust them to be a beacon in our darkest hours. When you're in balance, you will feel calm, steady, and deeply compassionate. When you're out of balance, you will feel heavy and slips into old stories. To bring balance, you need regular self-care. Group two, let's keep this train rolling. Okay, your angel card, which my mom picked out um, yesterday, and today's her birthday. Say hi. It's her birthday. Happy birthday. It's her birthday. <laughs> so Yvonne is your spirit animal, or sorry, is your message from your angels, Yvonne. Mm. And she says, you have a special bond with animals. Oh you my God. <laughs> your pets can on earth and in heaven are watched over by angels. So if you have lost pets recently, this is saying they are watching over you and they are being watched over by angels. Or your pets you have now are being watched over by angels. Animals respond to your kind and gentle ways, group two. You have a special understanding of them. 
You can relate to the innocence and trusting nature of animals, and you can feel a call to help them. I am one of your guardian angels, and I am here to tell you of the beautiful ripple effect that your relationship with animals has created. Your love for animals has also forged a deep bond and appreciation with you and the nature animals. How cool. All of the animals whom you have ever loved continue to be with you like guardian angels. Your love for them keeps these animals at your side forever. Your pets in heaven are happy, spiritually healthy, and playful and affectionate. Your pets on earth are surrounded by angels who bestow miracles upon you and them. In many ways, the animals act as angels for you and your loved ones. You, can, you are someone who truly appreciates the angelic qualities of animals. You are able to communicate wordlessly with these wondrous creatures. And your special bond with the animal kingdom is opening new doors for you right now. And then I do want to say, I know there's multiple people watching this, so if you chose group two, group two every card may not resonate with you. So take what does resonate with you. All right, three, four cards left. We have the goddess guidance, and your goddess is, I'm probably going to say this wrong, Unag, Unagi, <laughs> that sounds like sushi, Unag is the goddess, easy does it, there is no need to hurry or force things to happen, everything is occurring in perfect timing, that's what I have to tell myself sometimes, <laughs> okay, let's go deeper into Unag, group two, nurturing a cause or a relationship is a long-term commitment and one that can't be rushed. Oh, can you see here? Oh, there it is. This level of devotion comes from a piece of deep loving and concern. I care what happens to my planet and to my loved ones so much that I'm willing to stick with them through thick and thin. This isn't always easy, but to me, it's the only way to ensure that matters are resolved and healed. I listen to the passionate steering, stirrings of my heart. I reach out and take action to let my loved ones know how I deeply care about them. I take action to spur on my pet causes. Never mind what other people think. You will benefit by carrying through with your priorities. You'll feel so good about yourself if you can make time for the relationships and projects that truly count in your heart. <laughs> Do what's important to you and do it with absolute devotion. But remember that there's no competition for your true life's purpose. So there's no need to worry, to hurry, or feel that you have to force things to happen. That's nice. Let's continue to the spirit, conscious spirit oracle deck. Number 31, embrace change. This looks pretty. I move easily and confidently through the changes in my life. So embrace change. We often become complacent in our lives and re resist or are fearful of change. But change brings new opportunities, friendships, knowledge, and experiences. This card is reminding you that all things in life change. The seasons, your body, and situations. By learning to embrace the changes that present themselves in your life and seeking out the positive within these changes, you will realize that change can be exciting. If you constantly resist change in your life, will, oh wait, if you constantly resist change, your life will stagnate and you will have little joy and may begin to feel that your life is meaningless. The universe presents new opportunities in your life in order for you to grow and fulfill your soul's purpose. When change does occur, allow yourself to flow smoothly and easily with it. Do not force nor resist it. Divine timing will allow the transition you need to go through in your life to occur in the correct sequence and at the correct time. Trust that all will occur when when and how it is meant to be. So like the last card, take don't try to rush things. Just embrace it. Two more. We have the mermaid deck. Oh my gosh. Okay, so... 18 for the mermaid time and tide so another time and not to rush things oceanic I can never say that word my nose is just spells and rituals time and tide 
is right here. And the mermaids sing, in our world and in yours of old, the rituals would be observed and festivals kept because that way the mother would breathe in and out more easily. And we would breathe with her in the way of the cycles of the soul, planet, and galaxy. We make offerings to the sea mother, being sure to clean and care for her liminal zones, the places where you have so often walked. Have you not seen the dolphins moving through the shoreline, appearing to chase the fish? They are hunting. It is true that they are also moving along the coastline, cleansing toxic pockets of energy. We often attempt to detangle the creatures from the sea nets, and these too are rituals and spells. And you humans wonder what sacred acts you can do? You can sing and dance beneath the moon, on the shore, in the forest, by the lake. But you can also do the most sacred thing of all, a magical action at low tide. Before gathering any magical tools along the shore, you must be sure you have made an offering to the sea. We do not take before we give. The sea provides us all with life on this planet, just as a green and brown, rich, loamy earth. Let us thank her before collecting her driftwood, her seashells, or casting in our line for fish. Wow. So yeah. Cool. Last one for group number two. This is your crystal. If you don't have it already, you should go and seek it out because right now this will help you. This is what it looks like. Kind of looks like rose quartz, but it's not. It's... Rhodochrosite. I don't know how to say it. Rhodochrosite. And the meaning of this and why you need it is coming right up. Rhodochrosite. You are, oh, this is your affirmation. So you can repeat this to yourself. I love and accept myself as I am. I love and accept the world at it as it is. Deep in my heart, I know that beyond my perceptions of good and bad, only love exists. You are being urged to examine the traits you don't like in others, and rather than merely judge them as bad or avoiding them, look at what they reflect within you. Developing a compassionate attitude will help you realize that often the judgments we make about others are judgments we make about ourselves. You probably have already heard this in the spiritual community, but this is a reminder. All relationships are a mixture of positive and negative. They help us broaden our understanding of life and love and help us to see more of who we are. So that is your message, group number two. I am going to go ahead and edit this video and post it for you. And then the next video, there'll be a part three. And if you chose group three and you're watching this, then you're gonna find your reading in the next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.